All right, we will continue along as we have been going. Yes, we'll do a verbal set in the class, and then there will be a written set that you can take home. Unfortunately, I worked right onto the wire again, and I didn't get a chance to get the rework of the opportunity profiles for Crazy Horse. We need to have them for next time, because next time we uh, start using them again. The next, in fact, the next class, we're going to talk about the last two uh, tests and profiles, the agreement and the stage uh, test and profile. And then we're going to apply it for the first half of the charts, and then we're going to do some of the overall cross-profiling for the uh, uh, first half of the charts. So it may be a long session next time, and it'll be a lot of information to cover all at one time, but I think it'll work all right. Uh, and then the next time, uh, everybody will give their version of the second half <laughs> of the uh, overall cross-profiling. Yep. Right up until the last minute, I hate to say, but the day before the conclave. But because there's so much I want to get done, and then there will be an over-the-summer uh, assignment that you'll have three months to work on. <laughs> All right. Looking at Yokio Mishima activity profiles. The activity profile, the simple activity, is 11 aspects. And what I think about when I see somebody with 11 aspects, which is a fairly low number, it isn't really in the low range, you wonder if uh, the consciousness of uh, somebody that has few aspects, and when they're not being activated, which is more likely if you have fewer aspects, that you think that there are no options available to you or that there is no alternative available to you. And often that is what motivates uh, suicides. They think they don't have any alternatives. Now, I don't think that it, when you have few aspects that it always has to mean desperation, but uh, something like that. I also wonder about his chart if uh, his whole view of uh, Japanese society or Japanese culture and values, whether that wasn't very Greek in nature. You need to say he started out with very few axioms and built a very elaborate uh, cultural outlook on the basis of them. Having not read, you've, you've read some of the, uh, oh, Raz, hooray, hooray. It's all right, you will be spanked later. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at uh, the intensity profile, there are three high intensity, one medium intensity, and seven low intensity. This increases the outlook of things being bleak because uh, when you think about it, he has three aspects that stand way out. The moon trine Jupiter, the Mercury conjoined Venus, and the Saturn trine Pluto. And that means he has three basic tools that he uses and almost all the rest are not used that much. So there may be an attitude of not having any alternatives and all the bleakness that goes with it. Now, the uh, ancient Greek geometers actually built all of modern mathematics using just two, two tools, a straight edge and a compass, and they did it all with them. And if they could do that and outdo the Indian uh, mathematicians, I don't see why we should not go. <laughs> and when you start looking at other things in the chart, like uh, having the sun in Capricorn uh, 
Capricorn likes a lot of simplicity also. So there's something extremely Spartan about the chart as we've seen it so far. Um, looking at the quality profile, it clears up a lot for us. There are seven uh, benefics, two malefics, and two variables. And only one of the malefics is of medium strength. That means the positive aspects are the very strong ones. The harmonic, the benefic aspects are very strong. And this means in some ways that even though there are few alternatives, it's not a life with a really, se really severe kind of trial. And that's, that's not really hard at all, but maybe he didn't have enough trials. And uh, things thinned out and he got bleak in that way. And it wasn't necessarily from having something an overwhelming kind of trial. The, uh, this also looking at his suicide. Uh, if there was little struggle in life, things came too easy for him and he could accomplish what he wanted, this might enhance the notion of suicide. From Dostoevsky on, intellectuals who have gone into suicide have often looked at suicide as one of the only acts of freedom that we have. That every other act, we have the basic survival instinct that covers us, and we're always taken care of. But to take your life and to go against all of the laws of nature and to go against all of the cultural laws and uh, it would be a way that um, you were completely free. This is sort of like the uh, exception that proves the rule kind of consciousness. All right, looking at the application profile, uh, all of the applying aspects are of low intensity which means that the low intensity aspects will pretty much be with him all of his life. But the high intensity aspects, the ones that he's forced to rely on because there's, there's so few of them, drop off very, very quickly. So there's, it's not a high tension life, but it's a, like a uh, life where the bottom falls out. When that happens, you could see him... Uh, being left with a feeling of emptiness. However, in the period after activity, when all of the things pull away from being uh, in aspect, that's usually a high creative time, because in the emptiness, you're able to draw in uh, new things. At least that's what Herman Hess thinks, and it goes along with my experience. That when you've done something highly creative, and you've been involved in an activity, and then it's done in that there's a period of emptiness. And if you're looking for fullness, at that time it's really eviscerating feelings that you have. And But that is the time that if you can enter into that emptiness, that you're really open to doing new creative work and to receiving things in a new way. That's an uh, important time. Looking at the final profile, the phase profile, uh, Four in first phase, seven in second phase, and this is sort of an aftermath life in a different way. More things are in the stage of a cycle where there's reflection or analysis or reduction or rebuilding or things like that, and it's not uh, a heavy forward going time, it's sort of like you, you know, like a baby grows. It grows in spurts. And then there's a while that it's quiescent, and then it grows in another spurt, and then it's quiescent. Except with adults, that the growth is more uh, uh, intentional, and uh, the uh, quiet periods are not full quiescence. Looking at a little bit of internal cross profiling, if you take. Um, the application profile along with the phase profile, that is the uh, last two tests, you see the five strongest uh, aspects 
are separating and the big majority of them are in second phase. And with that, you get a feeling of a something like a fire dying down, like a, like a fizzle with just an occasional, occasional flare-up, and that is the quality of his life. If you add in the uh, low activity from the act, uh, uh, from the intensity test, uh, no, the low activity altogether, and it this seems like it's a very contained fire. Perhaps uh, there is something like uh, a cultural quality that comes from Zen minimalism or something of that nature. Oh, uh, here comes Heidi. She's late because she was working on her assignment. Did you go to the horse show last week? I almost went. Hard to get me out of the house. All right. Looking at the chart of Ethel Barrymore. The activity profile, another one with just 11 aspects altogether. Now, you might think that an actress would have to have, uh, especially a major actress, would have to have many, many tools to play many roles. That might be false thinking, because quite a few actors and actresses uh, make use of a very few tools. And sometimes, if they get stuck in those very few tools, they become recognizable, so that you know that no matter what the play is, you're going to know what to be able to recognize, because there are only certain things that the actors can do and can do with proficiency. My, one of my favorite uh, pet peeves was the movie actor Ryan O'Neill. He had only two tools fighting and crying and uh, he thought that, uh, that he thought he was a great actor actor because he could cry on cue and on all the rest he just stood there with a dumb stupid pretty look on his face <laughs> it was not not my favorite actor so this low versatility with a few tools is immediately reminiscent of Mishima but maybe too many tools diminishes productivity because you can't decide which among among which of many tools to use. So maybe they, these were both very productive people. Maybe the productivity is tied together with the uh, low activity. Looking at the intensity, uh, three high intensity, four medium, and four low. Can't get any more of a balance than that. And that uh, probably means a... Uh, Capacity to have the right touch for everything. You might say a full spectrum touch. Some people only have loud or some people only have soft. And, uh, you know, like you, you know, like a great musician can have everything from forte to pianissimo. And, uh, that's uh, what this chart has. If you do things just a little too hard or too emphatic, you lose balance. If you do things too softly, you can't uh, get any traction to get anything done. So this is probably very good for developing roles and for evolving roles in, uh, in a very, you know, this stage follows this stage follows this stage. Looking at the quality, six benefic, three malefic, and two variable. And if you look at the uh, uh, variables, one one is a benefic variable and one is a malefic, so the profile is actually a 7-4. The strongest aspect, the Mars and join Neptune, uh, have to, uh, has to be considered a benefic uh, because both planets have only benefic aspects. The Mercury in its conjunction to Uranus 
and it tilts slightly toward the malefic. Two of the three aspects of Mercury are, ben are, are benefic, but the strongest one is malefic, and all of the Uranus aspects are malefic, so one is probably strong and one is weak. So from this, you would have to say that her faults or her weaknesses were not strong. They were not enough to attract performance. And that she could do quite well because she had a lot of positive things. And the negative things that she had were pretty weak. Looking at application, uh, there's always a temptation to think that uh, application, which means the increase, increase of uh, uh, tension or it means the increase of anticipation, you would think that that would be very good for heightened drama. She seems to rely more on ongoing application and ongoing relief rather than having, a, having just a constant buildup. If you take Aristotle's laws of drama, probably uh, you would want to have all applying planets because everything has to take place within less than a day in, a, in the term, within 24 hours in the course of the entire play, and that gives you a lot of time to build up. So this would make a play much less of an event and much more of a window into ongoing activity. It's like those movies that are slice of life movies she would probably in her acting be something like that. It wouldn't be uh, all the rest of the filler to build up to the uh, high moments. It would mean that uh, the ongoing things were important and the, uh, the events weren't uh, uh, of extremely high importance. Looking at the phase, she has nine in first phase and two in second phase probably shows her as more of a character builder, probably even uh, career building, or maybe even building for the entire art of drama itself. Like she's always forward looking, always looking to consolidate and make something. And uh, that's, that's a very, that's a really strong, decisive profile, one of the stronger ones we see all night. Looking at the uh, phase and application tests again by cross-profiling, the uh, activity and the tension seem to be dropping off. Not much, a little bit. But, but while uh, everything is still in a building phase, so you get the idea of someone who becomes a regular. That is someone who continues to build even though things are not building intention and it's a more relaxed kind of uh, building, or constructing forward going process. I think younger people tend to have to have more tension in their building whereas an old timer or a regular who's been in there a long time, the tension isn't there, but the activity can still be carried on. Um, sometimes the building can even be better when the tension is waning, and even when the astrological influence is waning, because the big events are over and all the tension is over, now you can get down to work and do it all. You don't have to worry about what the event is going to be like. If you add in the quality test, uh, this feels like a very constructive slide down a hill with a uh, toboggan or something like that because everything is positive and everything is easy and there's no more longer any tension but still a lot of building. Adding in the, app, uh, blah, 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 the activity profile makes it seem like a very uncomplicated not a lot of twists and turns and things that you have to maneuver. Uh, it's a very uncomplicated way of proceeding with life. All right, everybody gets what we're doing. We're trying to get a flavor. <laughs> yep, we're good tonight. What is this here? Okay. See, I'm 
you're setting her up. I'm making her feel good so that when the spanking comes, it will be a big surprise to her. <laughs> Not as much as you're spoken to. <laughs> <laughs> Pass on to William Butler Yates quickly. <laughs> Poor Terry will be not the only one wearing red. <laughs> All right. Activity. Fifteen aspects. That's still on our medium range, but it's verging on high activity if it isn't actually there. Uh, this seems to shoot down our theory that... Uh, Low activity facilitates uh, high output because uh, Mishima had high output, but he had low activity. Now, Yates's output wasn't as copious as Mishima, but his work is still quite extensive. So you just can't say that the number of aspects does not necessarily mean how much the output of an individual is going to be. You have to find that somewhere else. And probably in the course of the next six or eight years, we'll find that out in these. <laughs> In these charts. All right. Uh, it also shows uh, the in Yeats. It shows the great variety. When you read some of his poems, you doubt that they could have been written by the same man that wrote some of the others. You know, they're like uh, you know, like they're from totally different people. Some of them are like Irish songs, and some of them are very very abstract. Looking at the intensity, seven high intensity, three medium intensity, five low intensity. Actually, this looks imbalanced, but when you look at it, the balance, perfect balance would be five, five, five. So it's a little bit uh, out of balance, but not extremely so. Uh, the fact was that Yeats was extremely passionate about his interests. The things that he cared about, he cared about with great intensity. Uh, there's a temptation to speculate that he cared so much, and because he cared so much, that's why he had so many aspects. It's sort of like the intensity of his feelings just sort of splashed out and gave him all kinds of tools to work with. Uh, I don't know if that's true. It's a speculation. But it is true that aficionados, people who do things for the love of it, uh, always follow things more closely than uh, people who are just have a more pedestrian interest. And because of that, the aficionado sees things that uh, a normal person wouldn't see at all. Looking at the uh, quality profile, nine benefic, two malefic, and two variable. If you follow his life, uh, Yeats was much more than just a literary man or a political thinker. He was interested in theosophy, he was interested in Orphic mysticism, and uh, he was even to some extent interested in magic. And that led him to a good deal of moral deliberation. You can note especially in the period where he writes poems on Platonists or on Plotinus, for example, that in that period of his life, he has more moral deliberation than in other periods. Uh, it must have resonated with his character because this suggests, this many benefics, that it could be interpreted that he was very much a uh, force for the good and a big force for the good at that. He could find uh, things in uh, political developments that were uh, ghastly and revolting to him. Nonetheless, he found good things about them, even though he had strong patriotic feelings. And that's quite an accomplishment. You have uh, uh, attachments like you get from the biases of patriotism or something like that to find good in roots and activities is a piece of development. Application, nine applying, six separating, 
the three to two ratio uh, probably indicates a high strong temperament, edgy, anticipatory, and uh, for that reason, you know, his wife was a medium. He couldn't be a medium because he was always on edge. He couldn't relax or uh, lay himself loose in, in a way like that. Rilke, a great German poet, would sometimes uh, spend months or years waiting for just the right period to write poetry. He had to be in the perfect state of mind. He had to be at a perfect state of attention. And then he, when he would have uh, a period like that, he would, uh, well, in one, or in one case, it was time to write two of my best books in Western poetry. So uh, this kind of edge that he has, where he's always anticipating, always anticipating, it's not the kind of thing like uh, Rilke, who just has to wait until things come right into his consciousness. It's, it's like this edginess keeps him right on the edge of insight, poetic insight, all the time. So he's always on the edge of all pouring. And you have a prolificity that would probably be uh, pretty constant. Life. Looking at the phase uh, profile, eight first phase, seven second phase, not one to merely act and not one to merely contemplate, but a little of both. That would indicate that though he led with his actions, that he could did never at any time outstrip his contemplative nature, and as a consequence, a lot of his poetry did not go out on a limb. In short, he could justify it, he could interpret it if he needed to, because he had that kind of uh, uh, that kind of thing. And since he was uh, a re revolutionary Irish thinker, his revolutionary views were not destructive. He was not like a bomb throwing kind of revolutionary view like that. Looking at uh, cross profiling. Uh, the first three profiles, high activity, uh, quite a few high intensity aspects, and a lot of positive aspects. It's almost like you're in, you know how snowball fights go when everybody bangs up on one person and somebody's throwing snowballs at you from every direction? This would almost be like uh, somebody was throwing snowballs of blessing from every direction and that they were winging a man. <laughs> And they all felt good when they hit. Um, <laughs> looking at the combination of the intensity and quality profiles uh, discloses an even balance of intense and benign aspects and intense and malefic aspects, which means that the moral strength that he had was probably the consequence of a pretty close and even inner battle it was intense, it was balanced, and the strongest uh, faults that he had to deal with uh, were dealt with with the strongest positives that he had. Probably, though, he was, because of his positivity, he was probably more keenly aware of his faults. Yes? Yep. <laughs> No, it just it just just had, it just had to do only with the uh, the way the aspects are working. It says, you know, like between the sun and moon, between any two planets, each planet has a quality, and the activities between any two planets are uh, 
doing some kind of work for another. But though it's just like our daily life. We work in the daytime and we rest at night. Or we work in the daytime and we dream at night or we think over what we did during the day and plan what we're going to do tomorrow. And uh, everything that's in first phase between any two planets, the work that's being built, suppose it's Saturn and Jupiter, when it's in first phase, uh, there's a building of a sense of justice. And it's a very steady, solid building. You can only build so long, and then you have to rest and look at what you did, and you have to plan for the future, and that comes in the second phase. Uh, maybe yes, maybe no. You can look at it either from either way. The when you start the zodiac at Aries. You're starting it in terms of form or in terms of matter. When you start the zodiac in terms of Capricorn, you're starting it in terms of time or in terms of spirit. There is much more to it than the way we're looking at it right now, and I didn't intend to go into it all, but in the first phase, the slower moving planet dominates, and in the second phase, the faster moving planet dominates. So the first half is all sun, and the second half is all moon. And with two planets, it does make a difference. For example, uh, during the times when the United States was still expanding and all of the borders within the country as to who owned what were not determined and they had government land sales. Uh, those government land sales took place primarily during the periods when uh, Saturn and Jupiter were uh, making their cycles. The trigons of Saturn and Jupiter were in earthy signs. And if you take and make a sine wave graph of Saturn and Jupiter, uh, during the half of the cycle that Jupiter is active, which is very expansive, which would be the second phase, uh, more land was sold. But in, the, in fact, you can take the two cycles. I've done it. There are books in the historical society. And if you take the, uh, the phases when Saturn is dominant, uh, which would be first phase, uh, there's much less land that is being sold, and it's a more cautious kind of... Uh, uh, development. So it's not just constructing, construction and deconstruction. You can carry it further and you can take the flavor of the, of the slower versus the flavor of the fast planet and you can't do that. So there, there is more to the whole thing. No, I'm, th I'm thinking of like gold land rushes. Well, you know, like the famous Roma land rush where people were running each other over with wagons. You know, you see pictures of they even have, uh, you know, old time movies, silent movies that show the Roma land rush. And everybody's out there to get as much land as they can. Only the easy to be festival days. We're running way behind time now. All right. Shirley MacLaine. Looking at the activity profile, she has 12 aspects. My whole take on Shirley MacLaine is that her appeal is that she strikes everybody as an average person with, with a little bit of a twist of beauty and a little bit of a sparkle and twinkle about her. She's not somebody like Meryl Streck that is overwhelming in her uh, acting capacity, or she's not somebody beautiful like uh, Liz was when she was young. She's almost astonishingly beautiful when she was young. Shirley McLean, McLean was pretty 
but you get the feeling of it like she's an everyday person, and that she's accessible to, to you. And you get that quality right from the activities here. Like she's like average, just like everybody else. And no more, no less tools than anybody else takes, it, it uses. Looking at the intensity profile, there we find something very unusual. Two high intensity, four medium, and half of the aspects are low activity. Now that's perplexing. But it, you know, it's obvious that she's not a super talent. She does have charisma, and she has a strength of character that shines out. And the aspects between the 8th house and the 12th house that involve Mars and Sun and Neptune do show charisma, and they do show that hidden mystique kind of quality, but they hardly seem strong enough to indicate the uh, strength of her character. So you wonder whether this isn't something supra-astrological, that something that radiates from her being, despite there being uh, little astrologically to give it an outlet. Uh, I believe the free will is that way. I suppose there are other things that can do that, that, that way also, but I really don't know. Some people obviously can grow and get much more out of a chart than other people uh, with the same kind of chart. So I just don't know what to say about that. Looking at the quality profile, seven benefic, two malefic, and three variable. I can't think of a single nasty role that she ever played. And, you know, she got herself in some morally questionable roles. But the character, even in those morally questionable roles, did something good and was still lovable. What we're saying here is that the roles that an actress or an actor gets resonate with their character. And they work their character out through the uh, play. Helen Bakker used to feel that way, that uh, a lot of actors and actresses work out their things in the process of, of plays, and even a lot of people who watch them, whether it's movies or stage play or whatever, and in doing that, the very thing that uh, Shakespeare does in Hamlet, talking about a play within a play, exposing to us by what the way we react to that kind of event, exposes to us uh, what we are, uh, and that certainly seems to hold true for Shirley MacLaine. Uh, you know, she's got her naughtiness to her, but uh, she works it all out positively. Looking at the application profile, dead even, six applying, uh, six separating. Now, some uh, psychologists, we've mentioned this before, some psychologists think that uh, humor is a consequence of uh, releasing tension. Is it 7-5? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I count seven separate. All right, five, seven. Good. Uh, but at any rate, um, That's, that's what I'm talking about right now. Yes, but um, the intense aspects are applying, and the separating aspects are milder. And this would indicate that her releases of tension are milder kinds of things. And so this is somebody that releases the tension in little giggles and not big outright hilarity like uh, you see the ball, for example, that there the release would be with uh, from high tension aspects. But, all right. um, there are some other things in the written notes too that will back up what you're saying. All right, looking at the phase, also 7-5, 
uh, in her uh, that she is more of a builder than she is a contemplative. In fact, the contemplative side is not easy to find, probably because she all has all that stuff in the fourth, then the eighth and fall houses, and it's hard to see that in her. Uh, all of her Neptune aspects are in last phase, so one wonders uh, whether that landing pad that she built out there in New Mexico for the UFOs whether that's out of character because her neck <laughs> is fading away. And, uh, you know, like she was building out of character, and therefore it has to be unsuccessful. Uh, <laughs> I had a hard time uh, getting a lot out of this profile, so that's, I was stretching very hard to try and, try and find something then. <laughs> <laughs> no comments. I'm not witty enough to keep up with you. Uh, cost profiling. Everything is uh, so balanced or so middle of the road that it's almost impossible to do any uh, cost profiling. The only standout profile that there is is a quality profile which causes you to wonder, is she good because she's so balanced? Or is she balanced because she's so good and she has her poise up that comes out of that goodness? I don't know how to say that. Probably both of at the same time. Those things usually are. One thing supports another and it's it supported right back itself. We go over at the halfway point. It's a cake. It's even kicked over to the second again. I'm ahead. Wow. Yes. <laughs> That is that uh, the idea that humor is based on the release of tension. And if it's, if it's something really intense that is being released, it would be a big ah ha ha, do that, it would leave you almost in stunned silence. And I, and I said in her case, because it was the low intensity aspects that were separating. Uh, it was more like giggles and not so much big things. She's a really hilarious type of person. She has always close in style, though. Because even when she was in that very, the, the movie you have put me literally down on the floor, rolling in the aisle, was being there when she played with Peter Sellers. She herself wasn't outrageous, but Peter Sellers, in that low key thing, I just couldn't stop laughing at Couldn't stop laughing at all. All right, cat. I didn't see that. Well, maybe uh, maybe over the summer I'll have to get a whole bunch of videos and look at a whole bunch of Shirley McLean videos and, and and get up on her. Or maybe I'll go off to Mexico and cross the fence and go looking for her. All right, Cat Stevens. <laughs> Pat Stevens, wild aspects, and other perfectly in the middle row of the road. I don't have anything to say on it. It's middle of the road, middle of the road. And if I try to push to have something to say, uh, you can get yourself into a pat serious air that way. You got the intensity, uh, too high intensity, six, medium intensity, and four, low intensity. Uh, there's some imbalance there, but it's not too extreme of imbalance. With the exception of the moon trying Mars, there is nothing that uh, gives any landmarks in this person's activity patterns. Because the moon trying Mars is outstandingly strong. It's almost partile. And it's almost, you know, there's every, it stands out and nothing else does. So this is somebody that shouldn't be likely to extremism, except in the moon trying Mars. That would have to be uh, matters of fluency in emotional expression, intense hot emotional expression, not positive. Uh, I haven't read the biographies to know here what's going on either. Quality, seven. Uh, Positive aspects, or benefic aspects, or malefics, and one variable. This is almost beginning to look like uh, 
that having the, uh, an exaggerated number of positive over negative or benefic over malefic aspects is, is associated with success or fame or something like that. It's always hard to gauge what makes for fame or success, and it would probably require looking at a good deal more of horoscopes uh, in these few that we have to make such a determination. In fact, I would recommend that to everybody. The more horoscopes you can look at, the more that you can study and work with them, even if you're working with biographies and not having to look at people's lives, the better it is for you to see. There are things that when you look at many, many, many of them, more things dawn on you. It's not a really strong thing. Application profile, six applying, six separating, more balance and more middle of the road. Uh, more of the intense aspects are separating. This might indicate his desire to retire from an outward life is not indicated by the extreme number of planets in the southern hemisphere. And the extreme number of planets in the southern hemisphere would have in the public light all the time. But this uh, uh, separation of the intense aspects, which are probably where his talent is found, uh, is where the uh, where he's dropping off and where he's most likely to uh, want to not stay in the thick of things. Looking at the phase profile, 6 and 6 is not necessarily a destructive revolutionary, though even though his uh, detractors would say so, and he's certainly not a culture builder. So he's not an out-and-out -out reflective, and he's not a, a single-minded consolidator. It's balanced, that's about it. Again, just like the McLean chart, it's very hard to cross-pile profile because there's so much balance in it. If you could, the only one that you can really cross profile is the intensity profile and quality profile. Even there, the, most, the two most intense aspects are themselves split between benefic and malefic. So the best that you can say about this is that it is a uh, talented but not intensely talented individual. Somebody that, again, comes from uh, not having a whole lot of everything available to him. Um, it could, but I usually find it more steady. Like some things are coming on while others are going off, and that has more of a, uh, of a steady to it. Yes? Yes, well, these profiles, these the two sets that were, the last two sets, the action set of profiles and then the very bottom one, the focus ones, are probably the most important. There's a value to using all of them, but, but these are the most standout, obvious, that you're going to find. Okay, so Mont de Beauvoir. Activity 13. Again, a very middle-of-the-road profile, and you ask yourself, 
Does a philosopher need many, many tools? That is, that they have to know all of the logical ins and outs and apply them? Apparently not, if you got by with an average number of them. Looking at the intensity profile, five intense, one medium, and seven mild. It's an unusual profile. It's one of those hot or cold profiles. Uh, I find that when, there, when it is a hot and cold profile, what happens is you never get to see the cold because the uh, more intense aspects stand out so much that you can't see the those of lower intensity. It's hard enough to find them in a chart anyway. Often the only time you ever look at the low intensity aspects is out of desperation because you can't find anything that applies to what you're working on except the low, act, uh, low intensity aspect. And then you go to it and say, well, you got to work very hard, but this is available to you even though you may have those thoughts maybe 15 times in your life and no other time. Uh, but uh, you, you work on it, you can get it because it's there. Uh, uh, would you uh, expatiate, please? Uh, okay, so since we can't do absolutely nothing, you're saying that we need that little diddly time to, uh, to recoup. Makes sense to me. It makes sense especially in terms of the ones that are balanced in intensity because they know how to build something up at, you know, evenly at every stage. And having the, 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 you know, she has all these little things that help her with the big, I guess. All right. This... Okay. Great. So it's spread out being applied into something very intense. All right, makes makes sense to me. The next uh, profile is the uh, most strong profile. Uh, of all of them that we have all night and in all, out of all of our 16 charts. It is the quality test. It is one benefic, seven malefic, and five variable. But uh, all of the variables are involved with planets that are only in malefic aspects. So this is virtually a 112. <laughs> Uh, a 112 profile, and that's quite a bit of malefic activity. Does it mean that she's evil? It could, but it didn't in her case, even though some male chauvinist might think so. Uh, does it mean that her conclusions or her observations are faulty? No, it doesn't mean that at all. It could mean that. And, but it might mean that she just has to be on her toes because she is mistake-prone. What it probably means is that her conclusions are uh, filled with unpleasant attitudes. And they're probably not stated in what people would consider winning ways. <laughs> so uh, we have a chart here of somebody that is very much disliked. Uh, the philosophers all liked her, but her impact on the masculine world, especially in the United States here, was not at all appreciated by men. And so, if you're, you know, if you're, if you're alone, you have to be a strong person if you're going to be out there saying, hey, this has been wrong the way things have been all the while, and you know that you're going to meet uh, resistance from establishment and People who got it good, uh, you have to uh, you have to come out and you have to say it with uh, uh, with sauce. And she wasn't afraid to do that. Uh, I think she's gone through most of the errors, and she's learned it probably by hard experience. 
Uh, and in that regard, it would probably be thought out. Uh, and she's probably argued it back and forth from all of the oppositions, and in that sense, it would be uh, thought out. Uh, but it, not necessary that uh, being thought out is, um, uh, is is indicated by that many uh, malefics. <laughs> yes, yes. Interesting you should say sandpaper because there is all that Capricorn in the chart. And this little girl here is a uh, lucky to be alive. We pray for her in the prayer meeting. And she is the worst case of shaken baby syndrome to survive. When she was brought in the hospital, she was bleeding out of the eye sockets. And she's about, she's about five or six years old now. She's still like a little baby. Not quite like an infant, but has grown little. And she was just supposed to lay there all the days of her life. And she walks. And some friends of ours love her dearly. And they have adopted her. And they've done wonders with her. But now, because she has no contact with the external world, uh, or not enough contact with the external world, because she can't talk or anything like that, she gets very frustrated. She's hitting herself. She blackens her eyes and gives herself nosebleeds. And she's knocked out uh, several teeth. Uh, and uh, I recommended sand. Uh, Capricorn Rising, I thought, get a little bit of that grit to the service and uh, let her know what's, uh, you know, that she does have a body out there because she takes the medicine for, uh, she bites a lot. Is that, that, she loves you especially if she bites. Uh, she bit me once so hard that I had tooth marks in my arm for two and a half months afterwards. But, uh, you know, she just needs to know that there's a world out but they're using a brush instead, so it's stiff brush and brushing with the body at the same time as poking, et cetera. All right, if you don't have anything to do, you got five or ten minutes or half an hour or two hours, you can always think of her and <laughs> give her prayers. Yes, she has uh, Sun conjoined, Uranus conjoined, Neptune conjoined, Ascendant. And uh, something about her spirituality was, was bought at a very high price. And... Uh, does mean that having those things right near the ascendant, that her body is responsive to spiritual forces. And, uh, she may be here for conclave. What is your presentation going to be for conclave? <laughs> no. No, it, no. Uh, what I was going to say is either you have something or you present something else. <laughs> All right. See, you sassy Aries people, uh, that's what happens. <laughs> Application. Not quite as standout as the quality for applying mind separating. Uh, this is something that is really interesting, that no matter how strident her attitudes may have been, or no matter how combative she may have been in philosophical destruction or in, uh, in philosophical discussion or in defending her theses, she will fade, and she does fade. Uh, but um, because there are so many benefics, uh, she may temper, uh, so few benefics, she may temper and she may uh, she may not temper, or she may not mellow. She may just fade. She may just be of a milder, nasty temperament than a, a, than a stronger, nasty temperament. No mellowing here. So the feeling that I get of it is something like you've been in a room where there isn't normally smoke, and then there's been a party, and everybody leaves, but the smoke is still lingering in the air after the party is over. Looking at the phase, five first phase, eight second phase. A definite uh, clear profile, but not as strong as some of the others. She definitely was a deconstructionist. She loved to analyze, and she was willing to take all of society apart. This is somebody that probably likes to take a clock apart, but not put it back together if she doesn't like the time that it's keeping. 
Uh, internal cross profiling. Uh, these profiles, activity profiles, display her, char her character much more than any of the other that we've looked at so far. If we break down the quality profile, there are three squares, four oppositions, five conjunctions. This would indicate that she's primarily a penetrator. And after that, she's a counterforce. She will square off, but that's not the way that she prefers to act. She wants to penetrate. Uh, that reinfor that's reinforced by the Capricornian planets, which indicate uh, penetration in another way. Cross-profiling the application profile shows somebody that doesn't like to hold the grudge. She's willing to fight and she's willing to battle, but when it's over, it's over. She won't hang on to the negative feelings that she may have at any given time. She wants to fight with you again tomorrow. Knows if she hangs on, and she, you won't come back. <laughs> no. My goodness, we're all the way up to Herman Hesse already. If I had known this, I probably wouldn't have planned any more for tonight anyway, but. <laughs> Another one with 15 aspects. Not an easy, I think I've read about six or seven of his books. And a little bit of his life, and this is not a easy uh, profile to place. His books are set in the present, or in a hypothetical near future, in the case of Magister Ludi. But he draws on many ancient cultures. But whether he's drawing on ancient cultures or whether he's putting things in a modern context, his themes are similar. So I don't see all of the variety. Even in the simple stories that he tells, he does produce many images. I guess you have to say that. And the images that he produce has, produces has uh, a lot of sub-images in him. I think probably the best example is from Siddhartha, where he talks about the water and all the fish in the water and in all of the sub-images within, within the big images. And I think that's probably the way his activity goes. But that's doing a much larger cross-profile. That's cross-profiling this high activity with all of the planets in the watery sign. That's what we're going to be doing uh, in the watery signs. And that's what we're going to be doing next time for the broad cross-profiling. And that would show that he was imagic and that he was uh, multiferous in the way that he was imagic. Uh, looking at the intensity profile. <laughs> well, I, what, what happened here? <laughs> All right. Just what you have to worry about is not the fish, but the scale. Justice. <laughs> I've been in Somnial again, and I'm on the edge of being overtired, and I might start laughing and not stop. Intensity. Six high intensity, four medium intensity, and five low intensity. Uh, it says another case where a person has a good sense of touch. He can state things with varying degrees of emphasis, and it's always appropriate. It isn't like going trying to go from one climax to another, and it isn't all like Gertrude uh, uh, Stein, who that keeps everything with no absolutely no intensity and tries to do it in very subtle turns of words. This is somebody who knows how to have uh, intense action and have a few mild things and then uh, build up along the way. Looking at the quality, 10 benefic 
five malefic no variable. Was he in control of his art? Most definitely. Was he a moral and principled man? Yes, most definitely. And it also indicates the pleasantness of his work. When you deal with, you know, he deals with some pretty hard topics, with drug taking and uh, uh, unfaithfulness and things like that, but it's never unpleasant with him. And uh, I think that probably is due to the fact of having so many benefic outlooks. Looking at the application profile, four applying and seven separating. Now that's really clear, and it's clear in his work. He never knew how to end a novel. Normally, writers not so much novelists, but frequently novelists, writers try to end with an exclamation point. They try to go, you know, they try to get build you up and boom, this is it. He doesn't do that. If you look at Demian, for example, there's this build, big build up. Is he going to uh, make love with his friend's mother? You never know, because the war comes along and everything is dissolved. What about Magister Ludi? Here he is the magister, and he has solved, and he is the champion of the glass bead game, and he's unhappy with it. What is he going to do with it? He drowns. You know, it, it's, <laughs> his novels are anticlimactic. They just sort of drop off. You know, and uh, that's it. This is really like that. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yeah. Uh, looking at the phase test, nine uh, first phase, six uh, second phase. Was he trying to build or support the building of a movement toward mysticism or something like it? Yes, but not as an organizer, but and not in a political sense. More he was trying to support it with literature, which I think is a valid thing to do. That's because everything was falling off. By the time he got to the end, the separation effect was so strong, and like his whole character is permeated with this everything is separating thing, that by the time he got to that's it, that's it exactly. Yes, I used follow through on a couple occasions in the written notes. It's a good cho good choice of words. Either you're reading my mind, or you've got <laughs> uh, you're, you're creating on your own. Next week, next time we'll have an assignment from you. <laughs> Well, along with Heidi's, you, you, you and Heidi can, can vie to see who's going to be first to present an assignment. <laughs> All right. Uh, he was an intellectual, and he was literary, and he built on his work throughout his life, and he built himself all the way into maturity. Looking at the cross profiles, because there are so many standoff things in here, we can't look at all the cross profiling. There are many, many things. We could spend a whole night talking about just the internal cross profiles in the Hermann Hess chart. If you take the quality profile, you see six sextiles and four trines. And the sextile is often a uh, synthetic or a broadening reflective kind of uh, tool. And it's something like the kaleidoscope. And if you look, he reflects in his things from stories to psychology. And from psychology, he reflects to spiritual seeking. And from spiritual seeking, he reflects to moral responsibility. So he's always expanding, and he's always taking one thing, and he's not staying with that in itself. And he's always reflecting in something else. Really nice use of the sex styles, and having so many of them indicates that's what he is. Uh, if you add the phase profile, it shows that he's trying to build and uh, build with all of this broadening. He doesn't want to have a narrow view of the spiritual movement or of spirituality in his time. Then when you bring in the application profile, you see... A problem. 
Everything is uh, separating. He cools off in his ardor sooner than he would like. This is the kind of thing that is endemic to the consciousness of intellectual liberals. The very thing that makes them open and expansive and reflective and very liberal, it's that very thing makes them likely to fold easily. And this is the uh, profile bringing in the separation profile shows that he was willing to, to fold easily. He never did speak out against the Reich during the uh, Second World War. He didn't speak out until after the war was over. Uh, what's really interesting about this is that he knew this about himself. And he even chastised himself for it in uh, one of his novels. How many of you read Journey to the East? And in Journey to the East, he calls himself out for not having remained really faithful to every, all of the other uh, pilgrims in the Journey to the East. It's a very lovely little story. It's a little bit heartbreaking that uh, he feels that way about himself, but it's sure he's honest and accurate about his own being. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Those times are almost as uh, almost as trivial and passing as Gemini is. <laughs> All right, Lalias. Fourteen aspects, which is moderate activity, getting up there close to high. Now, the thing about her is that because of her astonishing beauty and because of her life, the work that she has done is often ignored. She seems to have had more than an adequate amount of tools available to her. If you look at some of the roles that she took, they weren't all pap. She took on some things, you know. She was in Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and she did Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, and even Butterfield 8 was not, uh, you know, they were not uh, diluted. They were not thin at all. So she had the tools to uh, broaden out and do all sorts of things, but they never get noticed that much. Uh, intensity, 5-5-4, five, five, as balanced as you can get. And she's another one of those that has a full spectrum of emphasis. She was often called on to be too dramatic too much of the time, but she could carry it at any stage of the way. She didn't have to be that. Does her work and does her life mature uh, at all stages? Not necessarily in time, but does she have things going on of all different intensities throughout her life and work? Most definitely, yes. Looking at the quality profile, four, six, and four. Is she evil? No. Does she have problems with moral consistency? Yes and no. Uh, does she have Attitude problems, most definitely, yes. Has her life been difficult? Humongously so. Everybody's always looking at the scandal or everybody's looking at, oh, isn't this juicy gossip? Nobody looks at how difficult it's been for her. And this is one of the, uh, this is somebody that we know more about the personal things of her life in some ways. You can ask yourself, has she had a faulty body? Yes, she's probably had uh, more operations than everybody in this room put together. You know, she's had one thing, and she's been close to death a number of times. Application, uh, five applying, nine separating. Not quite a two to one. Has her star faded? Definitely. That's because they put too much stock in her beauty, and she let them do it, rather than... Uh, seeking always to have things that would distinguish her as as an actress. Does she follow through? 
sometimes but not always. Is her life anticlimactic? Most definitely, yes. Looking at the uh, phase profile, 7 and 7, is she as much of a founder or a compounder as she is a decadent? Yes. Again, we look too much at, at the decadence rather than at the founding or as the uh, building thing that she does. Is she equal in movements that are on the way up as well as movements that are on the way down? Yes. She stays true to some of the old movements. Uh, internal cross profiling. If you take the activity profile with the quality profile, then you begin to wonder whether her life has been so tragic because that there were so many things going on that she couldn't keep them all in control. You know, sometimes you can buy yourself a whole bunch of tools and have a whole bunch of things going on, but if you can't keep them in control, uh, you know, things get out of hand and you get uh, uh, you get a tragic life. If you add the application profile. You get the notion that since uh, everything or so many things are separating, that when things get complicated, she gets the feeling that things are slipping away on her. And when they're slipping away, she starts to lose heart. She will be courageous for others, but not in her own life. She's a highly compassionate person. There are times that you see compassion in her eyes. That is a very rare thing to find in a human being. But she loses heart with regard to herself. You can see not only, you see, it's interesting how different, well, when we get to the big cross profiling next time, you'll see how the things reinforce each other and how they uh, uh, clarify things. It's not only that uh, she has the uh, planets in Pisces that she identifies with tragic things, it's because of these, all of these cross profiled activity profiles. With all of the conjunctions in this chart, you can see that things are so complicated because there's something starting all the time. All of the conjunctions, each and every one of them is in first phase. And just when she thinks thinks things are slipping away from her, uh, you know, like they're starting, but they just never seem to get off. And even though she's got that very nice uh, uh, intensity balance where she could carry something all the way through, it's a very difficult thing. So like, not only are things slipping away from her and seeming desperate and fading fast, it's that there are too many new things that come along that if she would try to get a hold of the old, she couldn't, uh, couldn't do so. And the new things themselves are not very strong because they're fading. It's all first phase conjunction plus two. That's it. Oh, the, the malefics are the uh, squares and oppositions. The benefics are the trines and sextiles. And oh, in her case, uh, it seems the most work out, work out into having a lot of hardship in life and having a lot of uh, health problems. So based on that, most of the conjunctions Yeah, I didn't count them all out to see. Because there was, you know, I had more than enough information without piling up more information and having it last too long. These are the written versions. They're slightly different. They're not really good because I have not been in good focus for several days now. And unless I'm in good focus, uh, uh, you know, things don't come out quite right. Yeah, I hope it's helpful. It's warm in here. I just just been heating with the lights. I didn't want to open the windows up. It's going to be chilly out there.